hey, 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 all right, everybody, how's it going? Look, I got another box. Right, okay then, so what is inside this box? Well, it's a front dash cam and a rear dash cam. Now, the make of this is G GKU D600, and it's got a 4K dash cam, but if you use the rear dash cam with the front dash cam, it's 2.5K, and the rear dash cam is 1080p. So what we'll do, we'll have a look what's inside the box, then we'll get all the stuff, put it in the car, and we'll have a look what it's like. Okay then, let's have a look what we get inside the box in the JKU D600. Let's open the box up and have a look what's in here. If I can get the box open, it wants to stay closed, but we'll get that open quickly, as quick, well, as quick as I can. And there we go, we open the box up. The first one we got there is the instructions. Looks like some plastic things there. We'll see what they're for in a minute. Right, okay, there it is, all unboxed, GKU D600. And we've got these pads here, which are called static pads, which it says in the manual. It says to put them on the windscreen first, or the rear glass as well, and then stick that camera to that. Anyway, we'll have a look at that when we put it in the car. We've got the front camera here. Let's take, let's take it up the bag. We've got the front camera there. There's the lens. There's the sticky part. Uh, on this side, there's one switch that does move up and down there. Look at that. So you've got adjustment. Then on this side here is a USB-C. That port there is to put the rear camera in. And it does come in there with an SD card. It comes pre-installed with a 64 gigabyte SD card. You've got a trim tool if you need to take any trim off. Um, this here is the rear camera. So you've got the rear camera with all our lead. There's the plug I said, which goes into that bit there like so. So that's the rear camera, which sticks on the back screen. You've got the power socket there, look. Um, that's with the USB-C as well. You've got a scan code there, how to connect or the hardware kit, which that must have come from. That's to do with that box there, I'll show you that now. Then you've got some sticky pads to hold the wires in, you know, if you need to hold the wires, they've got some 3M sticky pads there. They did send me a hardware kit. Uh, let me just have a quick look at the hardware kit. Let's take that out of there. Now, the hardware kit, um, that's USB-C power, um, but it's got two of these sort of fuse adapters, but I haven't, they haven't sent any piggy bank, you know, the piggy bank sort of adapters that go into the, I'll put it up on screen, I'll show you what I mean. These will go into a sort of a, a piggy bank adapter. So that's all the stuff that's in there. Let's get all this stuff and put it in the car. Okay, I'm going to stick the rear camera in first. I'm going to put it in the middle of my windscreen. I think I'm going to put it at the top of the windscreen here. And hopefully I'm going to sort of aim it so the camera ends up going between these lines. You know, the heated screen lines. I'll try and put it so the camera goes through them, if you know what I mean. But it does say, to first of all, to clean. Give that area a good clean. It does say, like, use wet wipes and stuff, but I'm going to use some glass cleaner and I'm going to get it squeaky clean. So let me clean that. I'll stick on the anti-static pad, which I'll show you here. I'll stick the anti-static pad on there and then I'll put the camera on. Right, okay, I've put the dash cam up there. I put it to the one side because it's going to be temporary. I just want to show you what the picture's like. So I've put the dash cam up there. This car has got tinted windows, but I don't think it'll make much difference to the actual camera. Um, you can't see the camera from the outside, but you can from the inside. So that's what I put that camera at the moment, just for the, the sake of this video, to show you what it's like. Anyway, I'm going to put the front camera. I'll try and put it somewhere behind the rear view mirror so it doesn't obstruct my view in any way. So I'll try and put it somewhere around about here somewhere. If you've got a different, uh, you know, if your car's got more stuff by here, just try and put it somewhere where it's not in the driver's view. And I'm going to clean the glass first as well. Okay then, I have followed the instructions in the manual and it says to put the, the stick the electrostatic film on first and then stick the camera to the electrostatic film. So up there, I don't know if you can see it, I'll put the camera up there, let's get there. There's the electrostatic film there and there's the camera on the electrostatic film. So I've done that like the manual says and I did clean the glass first. Now you can see the wire, if I come on this side here, you can see you've got the USB and then this is the rear camera here going in. It is turned on. I got the camera turned on at the moment. 
Now, I have got the wires temporary dangling by here. You wouldn't have it like that, but I've got it like that because I've already got a dash cam installed in this car. This is just for the review. Now, I will show you later the sort of hardware kit where you, you tuck it up under here. Um, I'll try and show you briefly what that is like and what it entails. But anyway, I think I've got to connect my phone now via Wi-Fi and the picture should come up on my phone. So let me just connect the, this camera here to Wi-Fi. Okay, so looking at the manual again, it says to download the Jarvis Cam app and it's got an Android QR code there and an iOS QR code as well. So I'll download that app on my phone and then it should be easy peasy to connect to the camera. Okay, so I've powered on the uh, camera and I've downloaded the app. So I'm going to press next there and it says connect Wi-Fi. So I'm going to press connect. I'm going to look for the camera on here. Then it is there. And the password is, the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Let's do the password. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Show the password. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Connect. And there we go. The phone is connected. Right, okay. I've connected the Wi-Fi from my phone to the dash cam. And I'm going to press on the old Jarvis cam there. That's the app is called. And it's loading up. I can see D600 uh, coming up on the thing and it's got camera it is loading it's loaded it's connected so on the screen once it comes onto the screen uh, you've got a little box there at the top shows your camera and if i press this little wiggle turny thing there that should turn to the rear camera so there we are there's the rear camera i got the rear camera at the back at the moment it's not on the windscreen at the moment just for this test i just put it in the back if i press that again and go forward like that um, let's just wait a second it's back to the front camera now you can click on the video there's a video picture that'll take a, let's just press it and see what happens Stop recording. yeah it stopped the recording press it again start a recording if you press the camera if the camera is on the front uh, dash cam and you press it picture it'll take a picture from the front camera if you turn the camera around, like so, there's a little bit of a delay. I'll take a picture again. Picture It'll take a picture of the rear camera. Now, let me just go to the back of the camera just to show you. Uh, there might be a slight delay in the dash cam and what's relayed on this screen here. But I'll just go to the back to show you that it is recording live. Let me just get out of the car a second. You might hear some beeps and stuff with the doors open on the car. Right, let me just go. Here. And then it should be a delay that you should be able to see me now. Yeah, I'm going to wave. There we go. That's not too bad. Not much of a delay, is it? But there we go. The, the, the sun is, the light is behind me, so I look a bit shaded. But anyway, let's get back to the front. Look at the settings. Right. So, if I jump by here again and click on the camera settings. Let's have a look what the settings look like. It said it stop recording. Uh, so at the top we've got sound recording, speaker volume, video resolution, but there, if I click on that there, you can either have 1080p and 1080p or 2.5 plus 1080p is which what I got it on. Um, we've got light source frequency, it says 50 hertz there, time watermark, yes. Uh, you can flip the camera from left to right, and I think that's so you can see the number plates on the back. Um, so I don't know which way is right at the moment. Uh, can I see that number plate at the back there? I haven't got it on. I'll have to work that out later. Um, collision detection sensitivity for driving. When the camera's recording mode, it will automatically lock the current video when an impact is uh, detected. Got the Wi-Fi name, Wi-Fi password if you want to change it. Firmware, uh, format the SD card and factory reset. Uh, so there we are. That's all the settings on there. Is there anything else on there that I can look at? Um... I think that's about it really and if i go back to the main page it starts recording again and you've got camera file so if i press camera file it'll probably show the pictures there we are it's shown all the pictures and the files that have just been recorded so let's go back 
starts recording again. And there is something on here. Let me just click that and see what that is. That turns it uh, that way like that. So you get a full, full screen effect. So there we go. And click that back again and it goes back to there. So there we go. with That's the settings on the dash cam. Okay, then if you're going to use the sort of hardwired option, then you've got to sort of tuck it underneath the... It's, usually it goes under here somewhere, along there. Then you're going to have to take the A pillar trim off, run the wire down there. Now, there's usually, in most cars, there's a secondary fuse box, either behind the glove box or down under there somewhere, usually. Now, it is with mine, under the glove box, under there somewhere, is a secondary fuse box. There is a main fuse box under the bonnet, but there's a secondary one there, which is easier to run to, and you should find that in most cars. So you are gonna do a little bit of work. Like I said, it does give you a trim tool. You're gonna to have to take that off. And if you wanna run the actual rear camera, then you're gonna to have to do exactly the same thing, run it across there, come down there. You're gonna to have to go through all them panels along there and take it all the way to the back. So. There is a little bit of work to do. If you want to sort of run all the cables nice and neat and tidy, you have got to take a few things off. Now, because it's not permanent in my car, I'm not going to take everything off and put it back on again. So I'm just showing you what's involved. Uh, you know, you've, there's plenty of YouTube videos of people taking panels off and putting wires through it. So anyway, let's get out on the old open road and see what it looks like. Right, okay then, both cameras should be recording. It should be 2.5K in the front and 1080p in the rear. So I don't know what the camera looks like yet, the footage. There's a number plate in front of me there. Can you see that one there in front of me, that black car? What does that look like? Is it coming in clear? Uh, let's go around the corner here. Now, it is a nice sunny day. I say nice sunny day. It's a nice sunny afternoon. So, or a sunny evening, I should say. It's a nice sunny evening. Um, so it should give a, a good clear picture of what it looks like. Okay, so I'll drive up here a little bit further. There are some country roads up here, so I'll go towards the country roads where the road's a bit narrower and there's lots of trees. And we'll see if the compression makes the trees a little bit blocky or if the picture is okay. Now, as soon as you get in the car, like any other dash cam, as soon as I turn the car on, the, the dash cam comes on. Now, there is a hardwire option, uh, which you have to have a permanent live and an ignition live. And then it is a car park function as well that was in the manual. It did say something about a car park function. Uh, I'll try and show that up on the screen now so you can see what it says about the car park function um, where if your car gets knocked in a car park, then it'll start recording. Now that function is only going to work if you've got it hardwired. It's not going to work if you've got it to the power socket because obviously when the car's off, there'll be no power going to the dash cam. So it's got to be hardwired to have the extra features. So the front camera is a 4K camera, but the quality is downgraded to 2.5K when you've got the 1080p camera connected. I just got to get past this cyclist, so I'll have to be very, very careful. Uh, but when you connect the back camera, that's 1080p, and the front camera is downgraded to 2.5K. So. It's 2.5K that I'm filming with in the front camera and it's 1080p in the back. I'll put the pictures side by side to see how much of a difference the quality is between the front camera and the rear camera. And does the rear camera uh, still pick up people's number plates? I'll have to see because I, I can't see the footage until I get back and start editing. Okay, so we're coming out of the darkness and we're going back into the sun. How was the exposure? Did the exposure change quickly? Now we're back in the light a bit. We were just in the dark a bit. Uh, all these sorts of things, just to check them out, see what they like. Now, could you see the number plates clearly on them cars as they slowed down? Was that okay? Was it okay in the front camera? I don't know yet. Like I said, I haven't seen the footage. <laughs> so I'll only know when I start editing it. Um, so hopefully it's nice and clear and you can see the number plates because that's the main objective of dash cameras is, you know, to, to see the number plates on cars, to identify cars. Right, okay, we're coming to a very dark bit. All the trees are over the top, so it's gonna be quite dark. So I'll try and put a comparison side to side of the rear camera and the front camera together, because it is quite dark by here. Uh, my, actually, my auto lights have come on because that's how dark it is. Uh, so 
I'll put them side by side, you should be able to see them now. Um, we're just going to come out of the shade. It's just in front of us now, so we'll see what the exposure goes like when we come out of the shade. And there we go, we're out of the shade now. What's it like? <laughs> hey! Now any links will be down below in the description, so if you want to check out the camera and the price, look in the description because that's where it'll be. Okay then, here we are. It's about quarter to ten in the night. It doesn't look like it's dark in the sky, but it is dark. Trust me, it was dark. My headlights were on, so it was dark. Now, with the rear camera, it does suffer in the darkness. It's still bright enough. It's still trying to make it look light. It is a bit grainy. You can still see what's going on. If a car came behind you and was an accident, you'd still be able to see it. But you can see that the front camera is coping pretty well. It is dark, trust me. It's just the camera's making that sky look as if it's a lot brighter. So there we go. That's the rear and front camera in the night time. Okay, then, there you go. That's the review of the GKU D600 dash cam. All the links will be down in the description below. If you did like this video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Ahoy! Ah.